Morning everyone, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. For those of you that are new to our page, my family and I live 100% off grid with solar power and we educate on our faith-led lifestyle, which is very traditional, and wilderness survival, autism, breast implant illness, and a whole lot more. Good morning, Miss Diana. It is a beautiful, beautiful sunny day here in northern Idaho. I would love to be outside. However, everything is saturated. We've had rain the last two days, and I don't know where I would sit out there. Yeah, or afternoon, exactly, depending where you are. But, oh, so much good stuff to share with everybody today. Um, our lanterns are doing really good. We uh, put those out and have been promoting those and have been getting really, really good feedback on those. Um, for those of you that didn't see the lanterns, of course, they're downstairs, so I can't show you, but you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash lanterns and you can see... Um, our custom handiwork, the Mountain Man makes the lantern itself and I am doing the tin tinkering. So that is a joint project uh, by the two of us and it has really neat story behind it. It is just a divine gift to us, an idea that God implanted in our minds to um, manufacture and uh, God has been leading us greatly in embarking on more of our own journey and our own uh, utilizing our crafts to make an income here. So pretty awesome, pretty, pretty awesome. And I have to share with you guys, last Wednesday after the live um, with Daylight Savings Change, um, good morning, welcome. I'm so glad to have you, Mill. And oh, thank you, Diana. She says they are beautiful. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how they turned out and we are really um, focusing on making them um, eco-friendly also. Uh, I'm finding that when I'm utilizing the stains for those, even though they're a more a better stain, they're, they still have chemicals in them and that's I'm having a hard time dealing with that so I have found some odorless stains that are all natural and I'm real excited about that um, just because not just for me but for the recipient too because um, stains have a strong odor that stays with them for a while. You package them up in a box and send them out and that's what they're going to smell when they open it. So um, I am really conscious of that. And something else, uh, people have been asking if I'm going to be making my soaps and candles again. And I am actually. I'm going to embark on that. Um, everything will be um, either odorless or um, have natural scents. I had utilized some other things previously before my uh, sickness because I was able to. But there's so many, this has given me the real realization that there's other people suffering like I have been. And I want things to be wholesome for uh, our purchasers. So the candles will be soy candles as before, but they will be using essential oils um, or odorless. Um, I just love burning candles for the light, not necessarily um, the odor. So um, there'll be a little bit of both available and my soaps will be all essential oil based and all natural soaps too. So we've got a lot going on. It's really crazy, um, but life is so good. God is so good and I just feel so tremendously blessed. Even though we are walking out a hard journey, I did a podcast yesterday and the title of it is What an Amazing Storm. And I know there's not too many people that will say that in this world or be celebrating their storms, but oh, there's been so much gain through this and just God is enveloping us every day. It's just amazing. So it's all perspective, guys. <laughs> it's all perspective. Good morning, Miss Tammy. So I need your interaction today. Um, today's topic is the ultimate level of preparedness and we're going to really touch on that. But my question to you guys is, what is your most favorite aspect in regard to preparedness? I'd love to get your feedback on that. And the second question is, what is your least favorite uh, aspect of preparedness and why? So share that with me because I want to I wanna kind of base today's talk on some of your feedback. Um, I know there's not a whole lot of you joining me right now, but even if you're watching the replay, share that. I, I am devoting an hour every morning to respond to my comments 
on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Patreon, and even our emails. I'm trying to be really diligent about that because you guys have been showing us so much love and I owe that to you and that is what I'm trying to do is hone in my schedule a little better. Um, I'm typically out on the trap line with the mountain man right now, however, the last two days have been really rough. Um, I've mentioned before to you guys that my skeletal and my muscle system are still a bit of a train wreck. Um, they're filled with silicone and when the silicone starts moving I'm noticing that I have problems where my spine doesn't want to stay in place, my ribs don't want to stay in place. It's it's an uncomfortable feeling and, and not a pleasant one. And from being on the four-wheeler with the mountain man, we are going through some rough terrain and that jarring um, on the four-wheeler is just killing me. So I've actually got like pillows behind me. I've got the seat sitting straight up and yesterday I soaked. That gave me great relief, but I'm trying to give myself a little bit of a reprieve so I've stayed off the trap line the last two days. But we are just doing so much and just thoroughly enjoying our life, love our life, despite our chaos. But what are what are your thoughts on preparedness? I I love I really think I love every aspect of preparedness. Um, it enables me to be able to know that I am caring for my family, so it fills a passion for me. I love old timey skills. I love working. Um, in my kitchen. I love working on my homestead. So really our aspect of what most people would consider work is actually something that we're passionate about. So it doesn't, just like today, when we're when I'm done here and the mountain man returns from the trap line, we are going to go get firewood together. I love doing that. I love being out in the woods. I love that kind of um, laborious work. I love the sweat that comes from it. Um, there's just great purpose in it too. It provides wood for us for the winter to keep us warm. Granted, I have my fan running today to suck the hot air out because it is really warm in here and I wouldn't be able to be up here otherwise. <laughs> now, you guys have sent me some stuff here. So let's see. Tammy says, most favorite knowing I don't need to rely on others. Awesome. Very awesome. And least favorite how hard it can be to be prepared. Okay, very awesome. Very, very awesome. Diane Love says good morning. Good morning to you as well. And she says, I'm trying to get my, <laughs> my fingers are still so rough from all the work we do here and I can't get the message to open up all the way. Got to use the ring finger. That's one of the softer. There we go. Okay. Uh, prepare always have water on hand. I'm being bombshelled by acorns, 15 mile an hour winds. My trees are halfway over my tin top trailer. Storm is fixing to be here. Oi, stay safe. We'll be praying for you. Yeah, that's pretty scary. We had some wild, wild winds a couple weeks ago that is non typical for Idaho. It was like tornado gusts, it was crazy. Um, so definitely praying for you. And yes, water is extremely important, extremely important. If you do not have access to water, if the power goes out, stocking up on excess water is going to be one of your most important things. Um, one of the most deadly things is dehydration. I mean, that can cause so many problems. We were just talking with a friend and he was out hunting and got really dehydrated dehydrated in the desert and ended up with kidney stones really bad and it, I, you know for anyone that's had them I have not experienced them but I know how uh, painful it can be I'm trying to get Diana's to open here and my finger is not doing it no I don't want to block her and no I don't want to ban her I want to see what she has to say darn it all oh jeez this is a pain in the patootie let me tell you There is something definitely deterring here with my dry hands, but Diana says, I'll see what I can come up with here. <laughs> oh my, there we go. I got it. <sighs> Such a pain. Okay. Best thing is the knowing that we can take care of ourselves and others when things get bad. The worst thing right now is not having our own place to build things and store things the way we'd like. Yeah. That, um, that place of transition can be hard. And, you know, we are 
we are in our own place, but because of one minute being prepared to move, the next minute being prepared to stay, things kind of are disheveled too. And I, I get that because, you know, I packed everything away in spring, assuming that God's plan would be to get us out of here before winter. So now we're tearing things out of the shed and disrupting the shed and trying to put that back in place because I have a method to my madness out there for packing a trailer. And then the house was nice and neat. Now you got totes in here and stuff disrupted. And, and it also really alters your abilities to prepare. And for us as well, and maybe some of you, a financial aspect of things can be very discouraging because we know what we need but we can't afford to get them and right now that is certainly our circumstance um, we are down to the nitty-gritty so we've got to make do with what we have and praise the Lord that we practice what we preach and we have plenty put away and set aside and stocked up on however our nature is to be more prepared than we are. So I, I totally get I totally get what you're saying, Diana. And knowing that we can take care of ourselves and knowing that we have the skills is a great comfort, I think, for all of us. Um, Diana says right there with you, and I know that and and it is. It's a very disheveling feeling. Um it is a great learning experience. You know, some of your most basic needs, you've got to um, dig through the the coin jar to take care of, and and that is not a place I wish anybody. Um, there is great growth in this place. Uh, you don't take anything for granted, and and that was something we didn't do anyway. But this certainly ensures that. Um, and this was just so cool. Somebody shared something with me this morning, uh, a dear friend of mine, Deborah, shared with me um, a, a podcast by a fella, and I want to listen to it later. I didn't get a chance to listen to it before. But whatever God brings... No, wait, I gotta, I've got to look it up. My memory isn't always as good. And Tammy says she loves doing firewood for the same reasons I do, that it's just a like a really good, just, I don't know, it feels good. It's like hanging wash, and I know you'll get that too. Um, what happens to you happens for you. Ponder that for a little bit. That's a pretty interesting thought process. What happens to you happens for you. So... And I, I truly believe that. I, I always say to you guys that I don't believe that anything happens by accident. I think that everything has purpose. The good, the bad, the ugly. It all has purpose. And if you really learn to think about it, that what um, he brings us to, he's, he's bringing for us. In that it's it's something that we've got to walk through. It's something we've got to grow through. It's something we've got to uh, strengthen up through. There's there's always lessons to be learned. There's always things to gain, especially if our perspective is to look for what we can gain instead of the what we're walking through, and and that is our mindset. And it just makes me so so happy that we are both on the same page. We weren't always. Um, I've been wearing pink shady glasses for as long as I can remember. Um, but he was often really uh, taken back by the mishaps and things. Good morning, Miss Courtney. And um, just the other day, example, he's on the trap line. He pulled a trap. He wanted to reset it somewhere else. He's pounding the stake in the ground. It's a rebar stake and he welds a piece on the top. And the fact that this happened is like really rare and really unusual. Um, but it was funny, the reaction from us both. He was hammering it in and the top broke off. So he can't hammer it any further because um, when you take those stakes out, you need something on the top to grab a hold of to pull them out. They're three feet long, almost three feet long. So, you know, without that, it's stuck in the ground for forever. 
So he pulled it out and, and he came back and he's telling me about this and I said, well, obviously you weren't supposed to set that trap in that place. And he goes, that's exactly what I thought. So it's really cool when you walk through these things and you start to learn through these things and you start to change your perspective to see the good in these things and just know that there's purpose in it. Something good will come of it, maybe not right away. Um, same with vehicle troubles. I know Diana can relate to this. We've been dealing with it. We got stranded a couple weeks ago and had tr I had trouble taking the mountain boy to school and earlier in spring the whole front end of our truck needed to be replaced. So. You know, life throws us curves, but when you can learn to take the perspective of the high road and you look for blessings and you take the understanding that there's purpose in it, whatever it may be, as hard as it may be to think that there's something good that's going to come of it, for one, your days are much more pleasant. You don't get stuck in that fear and worry cycle. And... Um, it just makes life so much more amazing. I wouldn't be stand or sitting here behind the camera with a smile on my face the way I do if I didn't have this perspective. And I truly know that because as many of you know, it's very, very easy to get stuck in the fear and worry and woe is me cycle. Um, and that can really take you down. The enemy just wants to get a little bit of a handle, a little bit of a string hold. And once he does, he just has that great way of just yanking you deep. And that's why I said yesterday on my podcast, when you start to take this road, the high road, and your perspective changes, you become untouchable. Because the more he tries to touch you, the more you see the good in it, the more you are walking with your eyes on Jesus, and the less chance he has to get a hold. He's trying to get a hold of your shirt tails, and he can't because you're moving and you're on fire. And that's how I feel today. And I hope that shows. Um, God is good. And, and he will do good things in your life. The thing is, you got to seek him. And that is part of the preparedness aspect of things in my, in my mind. Let me see here. Mill says, Mill, where are you from? What part of the country? Just curious. Um, I'm trying to get this to open. My hands are really rough from all the work we do. And I can't always open there we go got it um my 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 phone is not acknowledging my stiff leathery fingers so she says um worst for me is hitting roadblocks while on a mission like the chainsaw not wanting to work when mitigating my patient needs a lot of work okay mill forgive me for asking this that's not a common um name uh, i do like it um are you male or female I'm gathering possibly a male because you said about the chainsaw but I could be wrong so share that with me I'd like to know and I hope I'm not you know embarrassing you in any way um, and forgive me but um Bailey Colorado mountains okay awesome awesome and um, I totally hear what you're saying the feeling of accomplishment is absolutely absolutely um, awesome. The, he's, they say the best is how I feel after working hard all day. The feeling of accomplishment is awesome. That is such a great reward. And I think that that's what a lot of us feel when we are seeking preparedness is that accomplishment because we are, we are reaching goals. We are, we, we have goals for starters. So many people don't have goals and they're not seeking anything. We are seeking to take care of our families. We are seeking knowledge. We are um, planning. We are goal setting. We are um, making lists and checking them twice. We are making lists to make sure that we have what we need. So it's really important that we take, you know, the right perspective in this too. I've been mentioning it a lot lately. Um, you've got preppers, you've got prep setters, you've got homesteaders, you've got self-reliant people, you've got all kinds of different titles out there. But the key thing is that we've got to merge and we've got to not just be pr preparing, but embracing the skills required that if your food stash that you took great time to gather runs out, what are you going to do next if there's no food? You know, so that's where your seed saving and your seed accumulating is important. But the thing is, 
Anybody can collect seeds and save seeds and purchase extra seeds, but do you know what to do with them? Planting seeds is like lighting a fire. Everybody thinks that if you have a lighter, you can light a fire, but that's not always true. If you're in an, a wet tinder area, if your lighter quits working, there's a lot of scenarios, just as something as simple as a lighter. So the same applies to seeds. Not all seeds are the same. Not uh, Planting all seeds is not the same. Growing all plants is not the same. So having the knowledge and the know-how is really important, and it puts the whole level of preparedness together, in my opinion. Stocking up is great, but when you have the skills to back it up, that when something... Um, is depleted or you need to for example um, mill mentioned a chainsaw okay so there's no longer any fuel or there is fuel but your chainsaw um, chain breaks you don't have a replacement or you did and you went through that one now what that's why we have two man saws crosscut saws all kinds of traditional tools here the purpose of that mindset is that we have three backups of everything both modern day as well as traditional and typically more traditional than modern day because they just are they last longer but um that way if something breaks on us we have backups we have the know-how the mountain man is skilled in the blacksmith shop to make a blade or fabricate something if we need something sharp if we need something to cut if we need He's amazing. If we need anything, uh, he's my MacGyver. I always say he can make a pistol out of a paper clip, and I truly believe that. He'd figure it out. So, with preparedness, you know, we were asked one time when we first got here, because we were stocking up on things and, and really getting kind of crazy with it, um, by a good dear friend, and, and he meant well asking it, and it was something that always, always, always sticks in my mind. You know, um, his question was, are you preparing too much that you're taking God out of the equation? And I never was asked that question, and I was like, hmm. You know, it's an interesting concept, because God does want us to be interactive. God wants us to take initiative. God wants us to be active and doing our part. He wants us to prepare. He shares that with us many times. But... He also mentions to us about the, uh, the birds and, and, and the um, ravens having plenty of food that he provides and they aren't storing things up. So I feel that there is a line in our, in our mentality, not so much in our aspects of preparedness, but in our mentality as to how we look at that. You know, Diana shared, and I've been sharing, that we are in a financial spot and that it's it's an uncomfortable place and not being able to necessarily stock up the way we need to. Okay? But because of my Christian mindset and because of my trust in God, I'm not worried. I'm not in, in a place of fear because I know God will take care of us. He tells us to not worry about our clothing and to worry about our food. And, and he still tells us to be active, but he also p puts the seed out there for us to realize that in a preparedness mindset, we can prepare, but we should never remove him from the equation. And in my opinion, and based on what he also shares, we should be looking at him always first. And then at our preparedness levels and and when we are in positions where we are without or we aren't able to um, do as we normally would despite our great efforts we are given the promise that he will take care of us how many of you take great trust and faith in that I live by that I absolutely live by that and because of that that is why I'm behind this camera with a smile on my face because that is one of the most and is the ultimate level of preparedness. Never remove him from the equation, absolutely. That's Diana. Absolutely. And you know, um, 
I, I experience it a lot where people are like, you know, there's no proof of God, you know, um, you're just crazy to follow what you can't see, and there's no evidence, and I plead to differ with that. There's a lot of evidence, a lot, but many, and those that are saying those things to me aren't willing to dig deep and aren't willing to accept the evidence they find. There is great evidence. So if you are one of those people that is doubting and, and um, saying such things, I encourage you to dig deeper. Because, and many people will say to me, you know, there's no God, you know, you're, you're just crazy. Well, I will be crazy. I'll take that title and I have no problem wearing it. Um, because this is how I look at it. What do I have to lose? My salvation. If I choose to join that bandwagon of disbelief, I have the option of, and possibility of losing my salvation. Is that a risk I'm, I'm worth taking? No. And to you I ask you, what if I'm right? What if I'm right that God is the ultimate level of preparedness and that we should be seeking Him first and foremost above anything else? What if I'm right? What's the harm in, in reading my Bible every day? If the Bible is such a joke and there's no evidence, then why are they banning it? And why is it such a big, big issue. If it wasn't real, why are people going to such great efforts? Food for thought. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Angela. God, God threw all this information at me yesterday. I had soaked and when I got out from my treatment, it was like just I had to grab my iPad and just start typing. And I think this is really huge, and I think that it's very, very important for us to consider all these things. I think it's important that we keep God first in our lives and, and um, live by His truths and realize that we are supposed to um, be interactive. You know, we are in a, a financial crisis, but you do not see us sitting on the couch eating bonbons. We are interactive and we are doing everything short of killing ourselves to keep moving in a forward direction despite the enemy's great efforts to kick our feet out from under us. We are also taking the not only the effort of delving into his word every day, seeking him, filling our heads with inspirational and, and soul feeding material and seeking that seeking that because when we leave our heads empty the enemy will be in there in a heartbeat and he will be bringing up all your past and all the negative stuff and all the things that you really don't need to hear because they will greatly um, suck you into a place that you don't need to be so by filling ourselves and making it a point to fill ourselves with his goodness we have the ability to stay afloat to stay up top to stay focused and to stay untouchable and unaffected. It's important. It's important. In a survival situation, being able to keep ourselves that focused and untouchable and, and, and in the zone is really important. And, you know, a lot of preppers and, and preparedness-minded people don't put this all together. That's why I'm sharing it today, because I feel this is extremely, extremely important. So then, after you've taken that avenue and you are constantly filling yourself, seeking Him, and doing it as a family, as a team, as a husband and wife, with a group of people, it's important. It's important to be empowered by others that are on the same page. And I am so incredibly blessed that God just continues to gift us with those people. They just continue to cross our path. So that's why that statement earlier um, that I shared with you, um, that what happens to you happens for you, I truly believe that. God is just constantly blessing us with what we need. And I mean that both um, mentally, physically, emotionally, with people, um, with, with 
uh, money. Good morning, Miss Shelley. I'm so glad you're able to join us. I hope you're feeling better. And this is the thing that we need to realize. He really does care for us. He really does love us. He really will bless us. He really will take care of us. So then our aspect of, um, you know, being prepared, not only with stashing and cashing and storing, but then having the knowledge to back it up. You know, you got to put, I truly believe you've got to put those two aspects together, not only in the preparedness mind, but in the knowledge banks. Um, oh, don't apologize. You're late. I am just happy you are here, sister. That's awesome. Let me see here. Uh, Diana says, if I can open it with my leathery finger. Here we go. Okay, we can trust in Daddy God. He gives us the tools we need to take care of ourselves. And what we cannot handle anymore, that is when He steps up to the plate and opens doors for us. Amen. You know, you often hear the terminology, God doesn't give us more than we can handle. I don't believe that. That's not written anywhere. God does give us more than we can handle. And he, just like we did with the mountain boy, pushing him out of his comfort zone and helping him to overcome autism. I love how she said daddy, because I always call him Papa. Papa gives us more than we can handle to push us out of our comfort zone, to be able to keep growing in Him. But He gives us the grace, su the sufficient amount of grace we need to handle what He takes us through. So my terminology and my mindset has changed on that because all my life I've heard people say to me, you know, God only, you know, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. After walking this out, and I'm sure uh, Diana will go, yeah, yeah. Um, he does give you more than you can handle. He gives me more than I can handle a lot. But I seek him for the grace to have the strength to make it through. And that is in the Bible. That he gives us the efficient amount of grace. That is in the Bible. So, I look at that in a really maybe unusual way based on the fact of how the mountain man responds to me when I say these things. Um, maybe I do look at it through pink shady glasses and, and in a different way than many people do, but this is my perspective. I am honored and privileged and, and blessed that he thinks that I can handle what he gives me. And, and I am blessed that I know that I can't do it alone and that he gives me the sufficient amount of grace I need to do it. So, you know, I often say about James 1, 3, and 4 about how, you know, he walking through hard times builds our endurance. I hate to say I thrive on those words, but I really, I really love the empowerment I get from those verses. I love the empowerment that I get knowing that he feels that I need to walk this out for whatever reason. And sometimes I've told you, not everybody is walking things out because of something they need to learn. It could be because somebody close to us needs to learn something and maybe being thick and we need to walk it out till they get it. You know, those are, there's so many reasons why things happen, many of which we'll never know. But how we handle them is the important thing and how we view them. And if I look at this different and people think I'm wacky, that's okay. But the benefit to me is that through my wackiness, I'm able to walk this out joy-filled and happy. And I would much rather do that than having to sit in a corner and rock and cry. I want to walk through this with an empowered stance and do it for him and give him all the glory. And I hope that's what you guys see. You know, we share what we share because we feel God is leading us to share this stuff. And and I hope we never sound proud um, or arrogant in any way uh, because that's not ever, ever either of our intentions. We are just so empowered by Jesus that we are strong in Him. And, and we couldn't do this without Him. This is a mutual walk. And I feel 
really blessed. You know, somebody sent me something this morning and said, I hope this gives you um, inspiration and um, um, comfort in your dark time. And I know it surely will because people sharing things with me is like one of those divine gifts. God puts it on their heart to share something with me and there's purpose in that because it's for me and for my walk. And I get really excited about that. But the thing is, and it will give me comfort and, and it, it will give me inspiration and that I know, but I'm so, so overflowing with inspiration and comfort right now because of his hand in my life. It's just tremendous. So to keep being able to refill and refuel and, and just uh, live in that place, Oh my goodness, it's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. Okay, so Diana Bradley says, yes, he does, but he doesn't tempt us beyond what we can bear, but always supplies a way out of that temptation. Awesome. Yes, yes. And his temptations are, are good temptations. Like, God will never tempt us with something evil. That is the enemy. Just like when Jesus uh, went out into the wilderness for 40 days, the enemy tempted him with evil things, um, but he responded with quotes from the Bible and, and God's word. And that's what we need to remember to do. That is awesome. Thank you for, for saying that, Diana. Um, so, so true. Um, Courtney says, hello, everyone. Courtney and I are watching on our laptop today. Mine is giving me fits. So, hello, Miss Kelly, also. <laughs> And we'll be praying for your machine. Uh, yesterday, this is the truth. I was up here in my office, and I look at this one of two ways. We had dinner guests coming. I mentioned how God is blessing us with people. This is the second dinner um, uh, date we had uh, with another trapper, and it's been just so enjoyable to get to know him. And, and we got to meet one of his friends last night also. Um, a fellow from Idaho, but he's uh, from another uh, part, southern Idaho, and... Uh, He's up here trapping, and we just happened to run into him. Super nice guy. So dinner was supposed to be at 6. They came out here um, to drop some things off, and we encouraged them to hunt around our... They were hunting last night, then to hunt around our area. And I wanted to have dinner ready when they got back, because I know from walking and hiking and that they'd be hungry. So my schedule shifted from a 6 o'clock dinner to probably around a 5 o'clock dinner. I was working on our website and I updated something and as I updated something the whole website just blew up it was done it was gone it was offline I was like oh my gosh because I just put our lanterns out there we're pushing our lanterns we are looking for uh, lantern orders to help us get by this winter so what did I do I just shut the lid of my laptop and I walked away and I went and made dinner <laughs> I almost messaged my prayer warriors and had them help me pray my website back up, but I figured that that was my sign that I was supposed to walk away and just leave it be and go enjoy my evening, and so I did. Walked away, I made a, a chocolate skillet cake, and I uh, was getting ready to fry up our meat, and already had the mashed potatoes and the carrots on. And about, I don't know, 40 minutes later, I thought, well, I'll just check to see for kicks and giggles if the website is up. Sure enough, it was up and running. There was no problems. <laughs> so it's just, it's just perspective, guys. It's just trusting in Him. And it's putting the whole preparedness, self-reliant, self-sufficient mindset together. Because that mindset and that aspect of our lives can't be fulfilled and can't be complete without him leading the way. 100%. I believe that. 100%. So, Diana, Di, Diane Love says, Amen, sister. We have to trust and walk with him. Sing when we don't even have a song to sing. Oh, that's funny you say that too. One of my great regrouping and renewal and worshiping ways to stay in tune with him is good music and I shared two songs on my Facebook page yesterday I think that was my personal page actually and I shared some on Instagram in my story um, that is one great way for me to just totally get in the zone I love really um, I love the hymns but I love them sung in a modernistic way. 
I love really upbeat music that you can dance to. I love, absolutely love the Celtic uh, Christian music. Um, oh, I can't think of what their name is right now. Just totally went blank. I shared them yesterday. Um, I'll look it up because it's worth mentioning. But their music just really resonates with me. Um, We the Kingdom, I think it is. Micah Tyler's really good, but, uh, oh, I didn't share it yesterday. Um, I think it's We the Kingdom, but anyway, um, getting, and that's just it, Diane, singing when we don't have a song to sing. We do, we do have a song to sing, though. It's like we have so much to be blessed and thankful for, and often we're not looking at it in that regard, and when we shift that and, and, really take that ultimate level of preparedness um, it's really awesome it's real if you knew what we walk out I mean there's so much we share there's so much we don't share um, it's just amazing it's amazing sometimes I'm amazed that I am able to view life the way I do. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so, so thankful for that. But it's, I couldn't have done this years ago. You know, this is the growth and the gift I've been given as a result of my walk with him. I wanna share something else with you. Two things. Micah Tyler is a Christian artist and he sings a song different. I'm gonna put the link for his YouTube video under in the comments later, or in the, yeah, in the comments for this later. Um, fabulous song. The purpose behind the song is fabulous. Uh, he went through um, his his mom having cancer. This is all back to back. Um, one of the hurricanes came through and trashed his house and at the exact same time found out his brother has stage 4 cancer. And this is the song that he wrote as a result of that walk is that he wanted to be different. He wanted God to m make him stronger to walk this out. And um, I so resonate with this song. And I know that Diana will resonate with this song too. And many of you. Um, I just, I know Diana and I are walking parallel. We are walking out different things. Um, but the emotions and the walk is very similar. And you know, sometimes that's pretty awesome to have somebody, you know, 25, 3,500 miles away holding your hand through the process. You know, it's nice to know you're not alone. It's nice to know that you are loved despite the chaos. It's nice to know that um, we can encourage each other. Uh, you know, we, the mountain man and I do have bad days. You have seen me on some of my bad days. What's really funny is the day that I felt I shouldn't be on Facebook Live and was going to cancel God pushed me to do it. We ended up being on for two hours, and it was personal conversation. It was people relating. It was people in same situations. It was inspirational, you know. So we can be used through these situations, too, and that's really awesome. And that is what happens more so than anything else is God takes us through these walks so he can use us to help others. We've got to be willing to share. We've got to be willing to be bold and express what we're walking through and, and what it's like. You know, when I talk about, when I used to talk about our experience, I think, oh my gosh, I sound, I sound so negative, I sound so humdrum, oh, I can't stand this. I didn't like sharing my, you know, what I was walking through, because it was negative, but at the same time it was negative, you see me sharing the upside of it. So there's two sides to it, especially if you're walking it out, taking the high road and trying to be untouchable. You will have two sides to share. You will have the muck and the mire, and you will have the glory and the gifts. So just keep that all in mind when you're walking stuff out. Good, The good, the bad, the ugly. You know, we have the ability to, to save lives. You know, just like I mentioned earlier, there's so many people that don't believe, but what if I'm right? What if I'm right? What's the harm in taking that road? I certainly am not going to change. Okay, there was something else I wanted to share. Oh, I know what it was. Okay, Lone Star Farmstead is on Instagram and probably other places, but I follow her on um, Instagram. Um, her name is Christina Sutter, 
and uh, she had made a really awesome comment on our lanterns and what we are using our lanterns to represent. And I just happened to go to her, her Instagram page and I absolutely love uh, her description of what they do. Um, she says, God first, just a family living life day by day. But this is the part I want you to absorb. Life is a gift given to us by God. What we do with it is our gift to God. How powerful is that? Have you ever thought about that? I read that to the mountain man. He's like, wow, that's like a really awesome way to look at it. Isn't it? I'm, I'm really going to, I'm going to steal that. That's just awesome. I'm going to read it again. Life is a gift given to us by God. What we do with it is our gift to God. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, Christina, that's awesome. Um, just giving Lone Star Farmstead a, a shout out. Check them out. Um, she's into quilting and sewing and really does some neat stuff. I, I'm looking at her, some of her things on Instagram right now. Definitely want to check those out. Okay, good morning, afternoon, Miss Jill. I think it's afternoon here too now. Nope, not quite yet. Shelly says, what do you do when you share? What you do when you share is that we are not alone. No, oh, awesome. And I'm so glad that's what's received because, you know, in and I try to mention it every time I, I do a live video. We give God all the glory. You know, um, we are blessed beyond belief, but we can't take credit for any of it. This is his doing. And 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 I want that to be what people are gathering from this is that they're not alone, regardless, good, bad, or ugly. You know, we're all in this together. We are called to love on each other and support each other. And this is just one of those ways I feel I can do that. And some, and my podcast is obviously that too. I am so touched by so many people reaching out to me, wondering if I've stopped the podcast, telling me how much they've gained from it. Um, really, really touches my heart. Um, you know, you just, and that's just it. Whether you're speaking or singing or, or, or writing or whatever you're doing, when you are sharing your testimony, your story, what you're walking through, you have no idea how you are touching people. We have no idea. I mean, it's just amazing to me the, the comments we get from people and the emails and things and letters. Oh, gosh. It's awesome to get your correspondence. It's awesome to know uh, that we are... Are, are gaining are reaching people and and please know that I say that um, completely humbly that it's it's just we give God all the glory but it it is amazing to know that you know we are walking this out and and we are doing what he is calling us to do so so awesome oh, thank you miss Shelley thank you she said that is so powerful thank you so much um, Today's devotional that I read um, prior to getting on here, I wanted to share <clears throat> to share this with you guys, and then we're going to jump on to just some of the marriage tips. You know, we, we've been on a marriage series. I feel very, that, very strongly. This is very heavy on my heart to speak up on marriage because we are seeing so much jaded baloney happening on this planet between being politically correct, being um, gender specific. Um, there's only two genders. Biblically, there's a male and a female. And, and, and God has called us to do specific things. And when we are walking outside of that, regardless how you think modern world should be, it's sin. Plain and simple. And I'm, I want to call that out. I want to speak up on that. And I also want to help people in their marriages because today's society is throwaway. It's a throwaway society and it is throwaway to such deep levels. And it's sad and it's saddening. And, and we are walking so far away from the Bible and God and it is very clear that our society and our country needs God. The more we walk away from Him, the worse things are getting. And our marriages matter. And those of you going through rough marriages, it matters to me. It matters to me greatly. I've walked out some really rough stuff regarding marriage. 
um, abusive marriages, uh, being cheated on for two years and having no idea because it was a work encounter and, and the excuses were legitimate, you know, sounded legitimate, could have been legitimate, were not. I've walked out a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of stuff. I see a lot of stuff. I hear a lot of stuff. And my heart aches. And that's why I am touching on the things I'm touching on. And why I want to be so raw and real. Because I've walked out stuff that has made me so strong in the Lord that I cannot keep my tongue and my mouth closed. I need to share. I need to speak up. Because our world needs, our world needs this. Our youth needs this. We need to be examples. We need to be pulling things together and back together and, and, and setting things right. So if you guys have not done the homework, the homework is still listed below. Um, we are doing um, and, and talking about biblical marriage and what marriage is really meant to be because the word submit has been so misunderstood, so trashed, so taken out of context so misused and it needs to be brought back to the correct form and the three videos that are part of the homework are Todd from uh, SSL Family Dad um, sharing um, his thoughts and with his wife as well because she did the woman's aspect but it's biblical marriage and then it's uh, man's place in the marriage and then the woman's place in the marriage and I think that everybody and feel that everybody male or female should watch all three it's very important. We are taking away the honor and glory from our men by being domineer, domineering women and, and not taking biblical marriage the right way. Men are creating women with no self-esteem, um, no worth, and, and over using and abusing their role as the head of the household. And those things need to be transformed. They need to be renewed. And biblical marriage is with a man and a woman. And um, this same-sex marriages and all this transgender bullarchy is sin. It is Sodom and Gomorrah all over again. And we're going to walk it out and live it out if we don't turn things around. And I'm not saying people shouldn't love one another. Um, but not in that way. Uh, things are just so messed up, and and it does it weighs very heavy on my heart. Good morning, Ken. So that's why I've been talking about this, and it's like I've said to you guys many times. I have nothing wrong with um, gay individuals. I have friends that are gay, but I do not support what they live for. I do not support it. It would be a sin for me to support it. And I don't encourage it. But I still love them as a person. So we can love the people, just not the sin. And that's the thing. You know, we gotta, we got to be willing to do the hard. As a Christian, um, you know, truth is truth. And, and I am not... I am not trying to uh, bash anybody by any means. I'm just talking truth. And um, like I said, we are called to love. And that's why I want to I wanna talk about um, ways we can do that. You know, the power of prayer is huge. And we talked about that last week. Um, there's a lot of resources today. There were a lot last week, but there's a whole lot more. There are amazing Christian resources out there. And... Um, by praying for others, um, at, for our friends, outside of marriage, you know, loving our neighbors, loving our friends, praying for them, wanting good in their lives. The same applies to marriage. The same should apply to us in view of our spouses. And prayer is one powerful and huge transformational tool. It's also a great relational tool to have a relationship with the Father, with Papa, Jesus. Shelley says, It is so sad 
the day they took the Lord's Prayer out of the schools was a day that our children lost contact with the Lord. For some of these kids, it was the only time they had any idea that there is something bigger than us. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, I'm looking back and researching a lot of that and, and you know, just seeing how things transformed from that point on is really, really scary. You know, they, wanna, they want to take away our gun rights and feel that the guns are, are the problem. But all of that really started when God was removed from the schools and the Bible was removed from the schools. I love Phil Robertson. He just did a small little clip the other day. I'm going to see if I can relocate. Well, I should be able to locate that in my history. And I'll share that too in the comments below. It's worth watching. Um, really like him really really like him and you know guys something else you need to keep in mind people like Phil Robertson and his wife you know they are not preaching God and not having walked out some really awful stuff they've got a story um, Todd White has a story his testimony is incredible and so is the Robertsons and uh, Stormy in the in the description below some of her books she and her husband had a story she's walking that out in her books and sharing you know their personal walk uh, Joyce Myers came from a very awful upbringing uh, if I recall correctly it was drugs and physical abuse and um, I even think sexual abuse you know so the resources that I share are of people that have walked this out. They are on the other side of it. They are not hypocrites. They are not, they are not, you know, sharing something, um, you know, I guess what I'm trying to get at is sometimes you have, well, they've just, they've just walked, they've walked the walk and they are sharing their journey and that is a really powerful thing to be involved in especially when it can when you can relate to it um, but prayer is huge and we should be praying for one another I am so thankful that the mountain man and I pray for each other we do that you know on our own but we also pray together and some of the most amazing revelations have been I've taken away from his prayers because he may not speak those words to me, but he prays them to God. And it's really powerful. It's a really neat experience. Um, you know, the one book below is uh, Men Are Clams and Women Are the Crowbars. Men don't speak from their hearts. If they do, it's rare, and when they do, it's powerful. But um, it's not a common occurrence. And it's pretty awesome when through prayer you, you hear the things you need to hear. Um, it also gives our man, uh, I feel praying together gives each of us a little bit more encouragement with one another, um, a little more respect from one another. Um, it's just a neat experience. I encourage you to do it. And I don't just encourage you to sit and pray side by side. I encourage you to pray out loud side by side. It's amazing. It's really amazing. But this resonated with me and I wanted to share it. Prayer is an amazing privilege because it involves conversation with our Heavenly Father. Yet if we are honest, there are times when it seems more like a duty than a joy. How many of, of you guys, you know, like, ha have to um, fight to make time in your schedule to have a relationship with God? I used to do that. I now have specific time set aside and that does not get touched. It might get rearranged but it stays in the day. Very important. This is especially true if we reduce our prayers to a formula or a routine, which can deaden our desire to talk to God. You know, so if you have that prayer that you just keep repeating just because it, it makes you feel like you are in communication with God, it's deadening things. Talk to Him. Talk to Him like you would talk to me. It's an amazing thing. In today's passage, which was Ephesians 3, 17 through 21, you can go check that out later, um, Paul, Paul's prayer is just the opposite. It is full of life, spiritual truth, and love for his Lord. He asked God to do great spiritual work in the Ephesians. 
in the Ephesians lives and by extension in ours as well. I love Ephesians. It's a great chapter. They all are. Um, to gain a greater comprehension of Christ's love for us, although it's beyond our ability to fully grasp the vastness of our Savior's love, Paul, pr Paul prays that we will be so firmly rooted and grounded in this truth that we will become controlled by it and filled up to all the fullness of God. Experiencing Jesus' love motivates us to obediently live for Christ and enables us to care deeply for others. That is the truth. That is why I wear this smile proudly. Because God is filling me up. I really mean that. I just feel so so full of love and so full of joy and so full of comfort and happiness, peace. I could go on. It's an amazing thing. The most important battles take place inside us, in our minds, our wills, and our emotions. And Paul wants to ensure that the power of the Holy Spirit will be at work in our lives. When we welcome His authority, God can use us in meaningful ways. And what's more, we'll, he, we will exhibit the life of Jesus in a fuller measure. Now I want to mention something here. The reason this resonated with me as well is that the most important battles take place inside us. When you are going through a marital problem, more often than not, um, you are focusing on the negative. And oftentimes you're living out that negative. You're experience that, you know, experiencing that negative feeling, thing, experience, on a regular basis. So it's hard not to harbor it and think about it. But I want to encourage something in you. Just as I encourage it in everything else, I want you to focus on the good. If there is only one good thing your spouse does that you enjoy or that you can think of at the time and at the moment and while you're walking out in a stormy situation, think of that one good thing and just focus on that one good thing. And really, really stay in that place despite the constant level. And like I told you last week, if you are experiencing something physical that is totally different, and if that is the case, seek help. But if this is, you know, someone being prideful or someone being rude or someone taking their role incorrectly, remember, you can't change them. God can, and God will change them. God may need to work them. God may need to break them down. God may need to take them to their knees in order for it to happen. And it could be a long journey, and I don't mean to discourage you in that regard, but the courage and the encouragement I want to give you is holding on to the good. Holding on to the good and holding on to Jesus and, ex and, and knowing and trusting that God will take you out of this and having deep faith and great faith in Him and, and, and focusing on the good. And um, like I said last week, if you need somebody to talk to, find somebody, a Christian somebody, a counselor, but somebody that you trust with your life, somebody you know that will not turn that around and take it and share it with the world. Because sometimes in the chaos, while the other person is maybe needing to be broken down, you may need somebody to talk to. Um, and and that's, that, it's okay. It's okay, but be cautious. As I said last week, you don't want to ruin your spouse by talking up all the bad you can every chance you get. Hang on to the good. If somebody asks how you're doing, share the good. The world doesn't need to know your problems, but God does, and that's where you take it first. If you need somebody to talk to, you find somebody you can trust and, and confide in and know that you can trust them. Diane Love says, oh my goodness, there we go, got it. Okay, she says, I tried to catch all your podcasts, but unfortunately I miss a lot. You're so young and beautiful inside and out. Keep on sharing. Please don't give up. I enjoy being a part of something. You have no idea what this means to me if I can just get the time right. I love sharing my wisdom and knowledge from my ancestors. It's very awesome. Thank you, Diane. That's touched my heart. Thank you. And just know that everything I do is being replayed. If you go to our website, treyerwilderness.com, and you scroll just the main page, 
You will see my podcast listed under the um, blog. You will see our videos listed, and um, from there, our, all of our YouTube videos can actually be watched on our website and, and scoured through there. There have been a lot. I think I've edited like 40 videos in the last three weeks. It's insane. Uh, we're doing a lot of uh, YouTube right now. But I try to archive everything on our website. And, and Facebook Lives are later being played on YouTube. So if you miss something, although it is great to have you live, and I enjoy you being here live with us, if you can't follow us live, you can always watch the replay. And you can comment and have the interaction that way too. Um, but thank you so much for your kind words. It means a lot. That really means a lot. And... Um, like I said earlier, we give God all the glory. You know, there are times when I get on here live and I was fed the information like three minutes before I hit the live button. This particular subject was fed to me yesterday, which is unusual. I usually get my information like right before I go live and he feeds me the whole way through. It's amazing. Um, but this is a really awesome subject the whole way through. And, um, I really want to encourage you guys to view your marriage as something worth fighting for. You know, so many of us fight through life and we fight for the wrong things, but a marriage is something that is very worth Is it easy? Heck no. Heck no. You know, some of the walks that I've experienced and some of the things that my friends have experienced are hard. Hard, hard, hard. Raw. Um, emotional. Uh, short of, uh, you know, nervous breakdown stuff. You know, it's, it's difficult stuff. And, and it's not just with marriage. There's so much in life. But I just want to encourage you, you know, no matter what it is you go through, you have that relationship with God. You're already standing on a heavy rock, one that can't be taken down. And if we keep our focus there, good things will come. Um, Shelly says, Trying to open it again. They're fighting with me, but they eventually open. <laughs> there we go. When I went in for surgery, I paid, prayed for the surgeon's hands for the best case, but I also had accepted that things could go very differently. This gave me great peace knowing that the Lord had my back and he did guide her hands for the best case scenario. Awesome. Well, girlfriend, we were praying the same thing for you. We were praying that God would definitely give you that peace, uh, that the surgeon's hands would be um, on task that day and, and uh, you know, definitely for a good outcome. But to have the peace and comfort before going into something like that, I experienced that for myself. You know, normally under regular even dental work, I just, I would get nervous and my whole body would start to shake, kind of like I had the chills or really, was really cold, it was just the nervous twitches. And when I went in for my, my last surgery uh, for breast implant illness, I had such an incredible piece about me. It was so amazing and I will, will never go into a situation like that again without praying for that. God answers prayers. When we put thing at, things at his feet, and give them to him and take it out of our control. He blesses us so greatly. And you know, the, the biggest struggle most of us have as a result of being human is that we try to do everything ourselves. We're too self-sufficient. We're too prepared. And that's why we need to put God first and then take those aspects. So it's pretty amazing. And I'm so glad that you had that peace, sweet friend. We were all praying for you. We were all praying for you. I want to share something else with you in regard to um, looking out for other people. Um, it says, make your relationships a win-win. It's a mountain man. I was trying to see if he had any fur on the four-wheeler. I couldn't see. Um, things might, the dogs might go crazy. Things might break up here. I'm not sure. It, this is real. This is real life. <laughs> so bear with me. Philippians 2.4. Look out for the interests of others. This is really... You know, when you're going through tough times, when you're not going through tough times, we want to focus on God so that God will fill us up so that we can be a light to others, be a help to others. Always make sure your cup is full, though, because when you are, are filling out of an empty cup and even out of an empty saucer, you're depleting yourself and you're no good for yourself or others. Been there. Done that. 
Um, if your only motive for giving to someone is to see what you can get back, you will be disappointed. The Bible says, let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. When you give yourself to another person for that person's development and well-being, you are truly giving and God will bless you for it. If you're married or a parent, you know this from personal experience. What does your husband or wife value most highly? Money in the bank or your time freely given? What would your children rather have, a toy or your undivided attention? I think if you ask that question, you'd be really surprised. Because most people, you know, a lot of people think kids would want toys, but that's really not the truth. The people who love you would rather have you than what you can give them. It's wise to invest in yourself and your career, but never at the expense of those who matter most. If you succeed in your career but fail with your loved ones, your success will be hollow and your regrets real. Solomon was famous for his wealth and wisdom, yet he wrote, As I look at everything I had worked so hard to accomplish, it was all so meaningless, like chasing the wind. Ecclesiastes 2.11. Ecclesiastes is a good chapter. They're all good. Learn from his mistakes. Don't invest in things. Invest in relationships. Here is how... This part was confusing and there were some errors in it, so I'm just going to skip that. But when you seek the good of others, God promises that good things will come to you. And it says, see Ephesians 6, 8. Now, you know, when you're walking out something hard, you know, everybody reacts to things differently. Um, for example, when I was sick, men are healer, or men are, men are fixers, and he couldn't fix me. So for a long time, I dealt with a very angry man, and I did not understand. Um, I tried very hard to, but I did not understand. I came to understand that his anger was because he couldn't fix me. He was not mad at me, but that's how I was receiving it. And, and rightfully so in a lot of cases. But as men and women, we both react differently to things. We receive things differently. We interpret things differently. All the above. Oh, that's a good sign. He may have just dropped off some hides and went to check his other traps. Keeping my fingers crossed. Um, and for those of you that don't like trapping, I apologize. It's just part of our traditional lifestyle. It's a way we make money. It's also a way we um, make comforters and clothing and shoes. It's also some of the things we eat. Not all, but some of them. So anyway, what I'm getting at with what I was saying is that in a marriage situation, if you are dealing with something, don't always assume that you understand why things are happening the way they are. You know, because somebody's angry all the time, you might think that they're an ignorant human being. Where in, internally a man may be harboring such painful feelings because he feels helpless. And, and when I realized that, I started really praying for him. And that really made such a huge difference. So did uh, being on the other side of the surgery and in the recovery room. But showing compassion and love and being willing to look outside of our own hurts and trying to understand theirs. Or just to have enough compassion to pray for them despite their maybe ignorance or tough love or whatever, whatever it is that you're walking out. Our best gift we can give to anybody ever is prayer. If you see somebody hurting, pray for them. If you, if you um, just have a friend that you greatly love and, and even their life is good, pray for them. You know, I will say this too, there's a lot of people that wear great smiles just like I am right now. Um, mine is genuine. I, I guess I can say sometimes it's not as genuine, but today it's really on fire. Sometimes people wear a great smile and they're really hurting inside um, because they don't want people to worry about them. They don't want to share their, their problems. So as the saying goes, you know, don't always judge a book by its cover. Don't always uh, misinterpret somebody's happiness uh, as walking out a grand life. You know, the thing is we can pray for everybody. Um, 
But when we are when we are going through a rough spot in our marriage, it's important that we pray for one another. War Room is a great movie by the Kendricks brothers. Their movies are absolutely fabulous. I can't wait to see the movie Overcomer or Overcome. But they have movies like Flywheel. Fireproof is also a very great one that I do not have listed below and I should add. Or actually that is down below now. Um, but Fireproof is about a movie on the rocks and a movie. Marriage on the Rocks, and uh, so is uh, War Room. Um, Fireproof talks about how to regain a marriage, um, and 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 how to go about it. Uh, War Room teaches you how to pray and the importance of prayer through such a situation. Um, I love the the older actress in War Room. She is just a hoot with a lot of spunk. I love her. So I encourage you to watch that movie. It's very powerful and there's a lot to be gained from it. And you know, I shared this quote. This is a quote that I coined. And it applies to every aspect of our life, really. Um, not just homesteading and marriage. But I said homesteading is like a marriage. It takes time, faith, patience, understanding, love, tenderness, strength, and the willingness to work through the unexpected. But raising children could be coined the same way. Um, marriage could be coined the same way. Friendship could be coined the same way. So I really, I, I, I focus on that. And I focus on praying for people because um, it's, it's, an, it's a gift that we are given. It is one that we can use very powerfully because there is great power in prayer. It is a great way to heal relationships to um, change people you know um, like I said we do not have the ability to change people and most likely when we make that effort um, we will um, do more harm than good than trying to change you know trying to change them ourselves rather than just taking it to God and letting God work on their hearts I've seen transformation so many times and it is just so incredibly amazing and you know um, Another great thing of that is that my hands are off. God is doing all the work, all the hard work. All I'm doing is taking it to Him. So if you really think about that, what an easy task and what an easy way um, to mend and transform. Um, you've got to have great trust in this and you've got to remove the fear and worry. And that fear and worry is going to set in. When you're walking out the hard, fear and worry try to set in all the time. Those are demons. And you can pray them away. That's the enemy trying to uh, seek fear and worry on you. It's that constant um, <clears throat> bringing up of past issues. And, and this happens in marriage. You know, um, as you're walking through a healing uh, journey in a marriage, you have a lot of things resurfacing. That's why I'm telling you to focus on, even if there's only one good thing you can focus on, even if that's the day of your, your wedding, whatever it is, focus on the good. Focus completely on the good because the enemy is going to use past experiences and bring them back up and try to make you harbor your thoughts there and allow you to end up in a negative, ugly place and you will be lashing out at your spouse. And it's important to remember this is both sides of the table. You know, none of us are perfect. Both men and women fail. Both men and women make mistakes. Um, none of us are perfect. And, you know, I know there's a lot of men and women that watch my materials. So I encourage you both to be lifting each other and to be working. And you know what? If the other person has no desire to work and put any effort forth, that doesn't mean you can't. You're taking things to God on a regular basis can still change even you know, can change your marriage even if the other person has no desire to work it out or to make an effort to put an effort forth because they feel maybe that they aren't to blame or they didn't do anything wrong so it's so much nicer when you have two spouses working together for the same end result but that doesn't always happen that way the same is true in preparedness you know you have one person that wants to one spouse that wants to prepare and the other one doesn't want to have anything to do with it and thinks you're a, a lunatic and 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 your ideas are ludicrous you know and that's how it that's how it goes you know we are different people we are different individuals 
but through um, a hurricane or uh, a, a long-term power outage and you have their creature comforts and their um, uh, favorite things on hand and you keep their uh, uh, what am I trying to say their uh, their needs met you know in the regard that uh, they can uh, bathe because you had extra water or uh, they can have their coffee with their creamer because you prepared you know those are ways that you can pull that person into your concept and the same is true with marriage if you are going through a hard time and they refuse to make an effort but they see you constantly making an effort because you are focusing on the good and you are giving them grace and showing them grace and mercy and they see that in you and they see what you are gaining through your prayer walk they may not understand where it comes from but you will know it's because of your prayers and and your your focus on Jesus that you will be able to become untouchable and stand above it and and they're gonna want what you have so this doesn't always this isn't always true um, but you know what I feel that biblical marriage is something that we need to fight for that we need to give every ounce of our best efforts to work towards solving and uh, you know something else that's really powerful is when you're walking out a biblical marriage and you are having marital issues and you have children you know they may see you fighting they may see the turmoil they they are gonna they are gonna walk this out with you but when they see the transition and they see the change you are going to feed them and and you are going to give them knowledge and power for their future and for what their life should be like and their future may be like. You know, we talk to the mountain boy a lot and we tell him the importance of looking for a Christian woman. Um, there is a lot to be said about that, um, seeking a Christian spouse because um, when you guys, when, when they, this isn't always true, but this is my perspective. When, when two Christians are battling, it's not to say that we don't fight in a non-Christian way at times. It's all part of growth. But as you grow in Christ, you start to fight differently. And you're fighting for, for your end result. You're not actually fighting. Um, and you take God into the equation. You know, in a situation where you are married and God is not in the equation, um, it's a different battle and I think many of you will agree with that but you know encouraging our children to seek Christian spouses and people that are um, living in the fashion that they want to live life you know it's important seeking seeking what you desire you know and it's really important good morning miss Janie I love you and I miss you <laughs> So what do you guys have to share? Does anybody have anything to share in, in regard to the biblical marriage and the aspects and, and the things I've been sharing? Down below are some really great resources. Um, I stole these from a movie website. Um, i got to think of what it's called. Hang on a second. The movie is Miles Between Us. I think it is on... Amazon Prime but I watched it on Pure Flix and I will share the link for that it was a really good movie it was a movie about a dad who was renewing and rebuilding a soured relationship with his daughter and um, it had a lot of marriage resources in there uh, that were referenced the daughter was going to school to become a Christian marriage counselor and uh, at the end of the movie in the trailer and that it shared their website which is uh, milesbetweenus.com and it said to check out the marriage resources and I wanted to check that out because I'm like kind of a sponge right now with our with our using this topic for a couple weeks I wanted to see what other resources I could find and that's where a lot of these came from one of the things I wanted to mention too Francis Chan is awesome 
um, his, his materials are really great. And, um, he did you and me forever marriage in the light of eternity. And then, um, that's a book and the love dare uh, by Stephen and Alex Kendrick is the book that goes along with the movie fireproof. That's another really good one, but there was something here. Was it in the sermons? There's a lot of sermons referenced, um, and Rick Warren is, is referenced as well as Francis Chan. Um, but I want to find this one specific one. Bear with me a second here because I intermingled mine in with these two. Um, laugh it's laughing through it's in the it's in those down below I have to find it here but it's it's laughing through I can't find it right now it'll pop up later one of the things I did just see that I want to mention while I'm looking for it is the importance of finding a Christian counselor not just any counselor because the difference is that a Christian counselor will be working for the same uh, ethics and goals and truths that you are um, as a Christian, where a regular counselor may not. And um, I think that's extremely important because otherwise you'll be getting worldly guidance instead of Christian guidance. And, and with today's world being what it is, I'd be a little afraid. So I did share um, some book references uh, that... Kelly and I forget who shared the other one, but Living Virtuously, A Wife's Guide to Keeping Her Heart and Home by Aaron Harrison is down below. And, uh, oh, I think it was Angela that shared it. Uh, love and Respect, The Love She Most Desires, The Respect He Desperately Needs by Emerson uh, Egger Riches. That's also down below. And then the same books that I shared last week. Uh, really great resources. You know, if you don't have money to purchase books, go to the library. These are great books. You can get audio books. You can get e-books. Um, even here in Timbuktu, we have a small library, and, there, and it uh, connects us with an online option. And it is fabulous to be able to listen and to read uh, the e-books right from our home. Yeah, I can't find it now. Because I had gotten to see, yeah, I'm not seeing it right now. But there's, you know, there. the one sermon I saw was um, laughing, l laughing through the, through, through recovering your marriage. And the funny thing is, um, that's why I like Joe McGee. Uh, he's also referenced below. He handles everything with humor. And when you're laughing, you tend to remember things more. It's the truth. It's just like doodling. You know, when you're doodling, when you're doing your Bible, you remember what you read a lot more than if you were just reading it. And um, when you're laughing, you tend to remember things more. It resonates more. It touches you more. Um, it's likely more to stick in here. Um, so I encourage you to look for lighthearted materials as well. Uh, there's a lot of great Christian comedians on the internet as well. Um, and if you guys need prayers, please don't hesitate to ask. You do not need to list, you know, all the details. Um, you know, if it's personal, if you want to private message me and share, that's perfectly fine. You can also email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com and I would be happy to converse with you. And you are welcome to share personal things with me. That's up to you, but you don't have to feel like that's an obligation. All we need to know is that you need prayer and we will all gladly pray for you. This is a group of amazing prayer warriors. By the way, um, I had you guys praying for James and Joseph, the little babies and NICU. Um, that had troubles. Uh, James went home, but Joseph was having problems, and they had taken, they had given him morphine because they had to put tubes in and and uh, different things, and then he was dealing with. Uh, uh, sorry, my brain is dysfunctioning today, uh, but from the drugs he was uh, dealing with. Uh, I think you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, um, once they stopped 
doing the drugs he was dealing with the struggles of that and uh, they were hoping that he would be home in the next three or four days so the grandfather keeps updating us on YouTube and sharing and he was very touched we did a, a special video out there just for them to rally prayers for them and it's amazing to see the miracles that are worked with the prayers that we pray also please keep Terry and June in your prayers I haven't heard from him for about a week and a half um, Terry had surgery on his shoulder and they found a lot more damage but um, his wife came back to help him through that and um, he has been asking for uh, prayer for he and his wife June for over a year to renew their marriage and we're praying that right now while she's there that they will be able to work things out and uh, renew their marriage so please pray and help us pray for that uh, Diana and Craig can also use prayers they're walking out a similar walk as ours it's not an easy one and uh, if you could just keep them in prayer as well I would greatly appreciate it also pray for Miss Shelley because she is uh, dealing with uh, now on the other side of her surgery she is healing and it is a long-term healing process so please pray for her for healing and mending and um, also pray for Angela Angela shared that she um, is looking at a parcel and um, they're a little nervous about taking on such a big undertaking and and uh, if you could just help them pray about that that would be great did you get anything yeah. Yeah, what'd you get? Okay. Sweetness, that's 11. Yeah. Nice, I'll be done here in a few minutes. Yeah. Okay, so, um, anyway, um, we have a long prayer list below, so please pray for those. I just want to make sure I didn't forget anybody. Um, the list is long, though, but there have been some extreme... Uh, Things. Oh, yes, please pray for the Jepson family. A dear friend of ours, Delbert Jepson, passed away. Um, he is from Intermountain Fur Harvesters. Um, they are having a celebration for life for him um, uh, this Saturday. If you are into trapping in the Pacific Northwest and would like to attend, because I'm sure you've heard of Delbert, um, and if you haven't, he is an, his death has been an extreme, extreme uh, loss. He was such an asset to the trapping um, community and uh, you can find more out about that by going to intermountainfurharvesters.org. I uh, run that website and uh, there's a link there to all the details uh, for honoring him. And uh, also pray for Ethel and Esther and uh, Mark Pat. Kenny, who we've been praying for for a long time. He is such a dear friend. Um, he has lent us his four-wheeler and has been such a blessing to our family in such a great way. We hope to see him this week, possibly. Um, but he's been dealing with um, multiple melanoma as a result of being in uh, a near Agent Orange. And uh, multiple melanoma is a non-curable cancer. But he is doing an infusion right now that is actually improving his immune system to help his immune system fight the cancer which is awesome I'm so excited to hear of such a treatment out there chemo and radiation are harsh they're poisons and toxic to the body and often cause more harm than good and uh, I'm just excited he has this opportunity now his son-in-law mark who is uh, only a couple years older than I am just found out that he has the same cancer and he is currently in Seattle undergoing um, uh, bone marrow transplant and treatments. He's already done uh, chemo and uh, hopefully he will have the opportunity to get on this experimental plan also. But his cancer is different. Um, it ha is weakening his bones. Um, they found out that he had a problem because he had such back pain and um, they did do surgery to try to stabilize his spine, but his spine is in such bad shape that they even had a hard time attaching things um, to, his, to his bones. They're just so brittle. So please pray for them as well. And like I said, if you have prayers that you need for someone else or yourself, you know, please list them in the comments below. We are always happy to pray for you. And like I said, you can private message me or email me. But I'm going to pray for us and then let you guys get back to your day. But I so appreciate you guys joining me. This has been awesome. Your feedback and comments and your love is just so incredible, so amazing. And I hope that the fire that I've got going on in me today has been an inspiration and encouragement to you. So I'm going to pray here. 
Papa, I just thank you for your love and your blessings, your mercy and your grace on all of us. I just ask that you lift us all up. Uh, wrap your healing arms around those that need healing. For those that just need to feel your presence and love, let them feel your strong arms embracing them. And I just ask that you be with everyone. Help them walk out whatever it is they are walking out in life. If they are dealing with marital problems, please help them seek you and, and find you. And today's message was really powerful. I truly believe that without you at the head of our equation, no matter what level of preparedness and self-reliance we choose to take on, we will always be missing the main element. So I hope that people um, acknowledge this truth and I hope that they also acknowledge the truth of not only storing up lots of things but also having the knowledge and skills to be able to take over when those things run out. And I just ask that you be with everyone, empower everyone, and give them the strength to walk out their day-to-day. -day. Help everyone to just walk out their day-to-day, their -day, not looking too far ahead and just enjoying what they are, are in right at the moment. There is so much greatness in that. And I just ask that you just show your love and, and your hand and your miracles in their lives. Thank you for answering so many of our prayers and, and for being with those that are in need. And I just thank you for all that you're going to do for each and every one of us. And I ask this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. Thank you again for joining me today. I love you all. Thank you so much for being a part of, of this community. Um, I'm just the vessel that's leading the way, but you guys are, 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 are the strength that runs it too. So thank you for empowering me to do what I do. So guys, have a great day. I love you all. God bless.